In a surprising twist of political theater, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has issued a bold proclamation, declaring that he is more than ready to face any renegotiation attempts from Donald Trump regarding the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement. This pronouncement comes in response to the former U.S. president's vow to reopen trade talks if he triumphs in the upcoming November election. While Trudeau's statement might sound like a heroic stand for Canadian interests, many can't help but wonder if it's more of an election season bravado than true grit. After all, when was the last time the political headline wasn't followed by a sigh of skepticism? The dynamics between Canada and the U.S. have always been intricate, with trade playing a crucial role in shaping their bilateral ties. And once more, we stand at the precipice of potentially profound changes to this agreement, suggesting that what lies ahead could drastically reshape the economic landscape not just between these two nations, but within the wider North American continent. Let's dive into the details and explore what's really at play in this renewed NAFTA not NAFTA saga. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's bold words certainly grabbed headlines echoing through the media as a firm don't mess with Canada stance. However, considering Trudeau's track record when dealing with high-stakes negotiations, some are raising eyebrows. Remember the last time Trudeau faced Trump's administration over trade deals back in the tumultuous days of NAFTA's transformation into the U.S. and CA? Many Canadians felt their leader was more concerned with photo ops than tangible results. Is this the same script being pulled off the political shelf, dusted off, and presented as a fresh resolve? Trudeau assures the public that Canada will steadfastly assert its own interests, a promise tantalizingly optimistic, yet perhaps slightly hard to swallow. He highlighted Canada's historical defiance of global protectionist trends, claiming that Canadian jobs and industries will be front and center during any future negotiations. Critics, however, might argue that Trudeau's version of protection aligns with his infamous track record of prioritizing global image over domestic welfare. One might cheekily wonder if the Prime Minister is secretly hoping his charm offensive will once again hold more weight than concrete policy strategies. The seasoned politicians and analysts can't help but observe that Trudeau's promises often ring with a familiar tone evoking past bluffs that have left voters cautious. Judy Chen with CTV News. Uh, U.S. presidential candidate and former President Donald Trump announced yesterday that he will renegotiate uh, the Canada-Mexico-U.S. trade agreement. What is, your, what is your comment and how are you going to reassure Canadian businesses that the protectionist turmoil they experienced the last time uh, Trump ripped up uh, NAFTA will not be felt this time? Because Kamala Harris has also said that she will uh, renegotiate the agreement. We've been here before. Um, we know that there is a certain amount of protectionist sentiment uh, in the United States right now, uh, and indeed in the world. Uh, over the past decade, we've seen uh, many countries in the world turn away from trade deals, um, move in more insular directions. But Canada has successfully bucked that trend. Over the past decade, we've successfully uh, negotiated the conclusion uh, a free trade deal with Europe, a free trade deal with uh, the significant Asian economies within the CPTPP. We've uh, moved forward on successfully renegotiating, renegotiating NAFTA in a deal that had bipartisan support uh, in the U.S. Congress. We did it by standing up for Canadian jobs, for demonstrating how integrated, in the case of the United States, our economies already are. And we are ready to do it again if necessary. I think Canadians and Americans have always successfully worked together uh, to create opportunities that far go beyond uh, each of our individual countries. Um, we've done this before. We can do that again if we need to. But we'll do it by putting Canadian interests first and foremost, as we have every other time. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, never one for subtlety, has announced his intentions to shake up the trade agreement landscape again. His promise to safeguard the American economy against non-transparent transshipment practices and to protect industries like auto manufacturing is convincingly clear. If his narrative seems vaguely familiar, it's because it is. The Trump show seems to rerun its themes. Hardline stances, shocking declarations, mixed with a touch of economic nationalism. Love him or hate him. Trump always manages to spin a yarn that's engaging to follow, at least from a political entertainment perspective. Yet beneath the bombastic bravado lies the unyielding strategy to tilt trade balances unequivocally in favor of American workers, 
an ambition that often clashes with Canadian economic strategies. I'm announcing today that upon taking office, I will formally notify Mexico and Canada of my intention to invoke the six-year renegotiation provisions of the USMCA that I put in. That was the hardest thing I had to get. They didn't want that. They wanted to have it long. But I wanted to, because there's always like little tricks they want to play. I said, nope, I want to be able to renegotiate in six years, otherwise we're not making the deal. And I got it, and it's coming due very soon. Oh, I'm going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> and that'll address these concerns. And I'll also seek strong new protections against transshipment so that China and other countries cannot smuggle their products and auto parts into the United States tax-free <laughs> through Mexico. To the detriment of our workers and our supply chains. They smuggle this stuff in. They don't pay anything. We're going to have very strong language on that. It's not hard once you know about it. But nobody, no politician knows about it. You know, and, and when they signed the NAFTA deal, there were some mistakes made. Typos, like typos. There were mistakes made. And they were going to take care of it the following day. 30 years later, they said, whatever happened? Like mistakes, like on the numbers, you know? which were always against us. Nobody ever did anything about it except me. I terminated NAFTA. That's a pretty big thing. A lot of people said it would be impossible to do. I got it done. And uh, we have a great deal now. What we have to do is make it much better even. And we'll be able to do that very shortly. It seems the trade agreement is turning into a favorite political talking point, with each potential U.S. administration eager to put its stamp on the deal, for better or worse. For Canada, each stroke of the pen from an American leader holds significant implications for domestic industries and the livelihood of countless workers who depend on cross-border trade stability. Trudeau's approach, however, seems to lean towards a business-as-usual attitude cloaked in a veneer of optimism. He touts Canada's established trade alliances, everything from European partnerships to Pacific connections, painting an image of a global diplomatic powerhouse. Canada will start negotiations uh, shortly. I'll be uh, calling the Prime Minister very soon, and we'll start negotiation. And if they'd like to negotiate fairly, we'll, uh, we'll do that. You know, they have uh, tariffs of almost 300 percent on some of our dairy products, so we can't have that. We're not going to stand for that. Uh, I think with Canada, frankly, the easiest thing we can do is to tariff their cars coming in. It's a tremendous amount of money, and it's a very simple negotiation. It could end in one day, and uh, we take in a lot of money the following day. But I think we'll give them a chance to uh, probably have a separate deal. We could have a separate deal or we could put it into this deal. I like to call this deal the United States-Mexico Trade Agreement. I think it's an elegant name. I think NAFTA has a lot of bad connotations for the United States because it was a ripoff. It was a deal that was a horrible deal for our country. We will see whether or not uh, we decide to put up uh, Canada or just do a separate deal with Canada if they want to make the deal. The simplest deal is more or less already made, it would be very easy to do and execute. We'll be waiting for Canada to be integrated into this process. I send you affectionate hug. And uh, all my greetings to you, my regards. A hug from you would be very nice. Thank you. <laughs> so long. Thanks. Goodbye, Enrique. Okay, so we've uh, made the deal with Canada. Uh, it's a with very, Canada. Uh, uh, they, they, they're starting. We made the deal with Mexico, and I think it's a uh, very deal. We're starting negotiations with Canada pretty much uh, immediately. I can't tell you where those negotiations are gone. It's going to be uh, it's a smaller segment, as you know. Mexico is a very large trading partner, but we uh, we've now concluded our deal, and it's being finalized. Yeah. We have an agreement where. Uh, both with Canada and with Mexico, uh, I, ha I will terminate the existing deal. When that happens, uh, I can't quite tell you. It depends on what the timetable is with Congress. But I'll be terminating uh, the existing deal and going into this deal. Uh, we'll start negotiating with Canada relatively soon. They want to start — they want to negotiate very badly. However, some critics argue that it's more about expanding his global brand than truly reinforcing Canada's economic foundation. Observers have noted that the escalation of trade war rhetoric, protectionist policies circulating globally, and a more isolationist America could be the real challenge for Trudeau, should those USMCA renegotiation talks come to pass.
Canada's robust tapestry of international ties might provide a safety net, but whether it can shield against impending storms of economic nationalism is a pressing question. Let's not forget the conspiracy theories that often buzz around these topics, serving as the cherry on top of this political drama Sunday. From whispers about Trudeau's ulterior motives to speculation that influential figures, perched in the shadows of power, are tugging strings to ensure certain outcomes, conspiracy chatter thrives. But in the political world, where transparency is a distant dream, the lines between fact and fiction sometimes blur in the most amusing of ways. These narratives, whether rooted in reality or mere speculation, add an element of unpredictability and intrigue to the unfolding trade discussions. At the heart of this, though, is the question of whether Canada is truly poised and ready for the brewing storm of trade negotiations that may lie ahead. Indeed, can Canada afford another round of economic turbulence orchestrated in part by southbound neighbors, helmed by either a returning Trump or a new face like Harris? The stakes are high with Canadian industry and jobs hanging in the balance, and whether Trudeau's battle cry will yield the fortitude necessary to hold ground remains to be seen. The future of Canada's economic stability is intricately linked to these negotiations, and the nation's leaders must tread carefully to safeguard their citizens from any potential fallout. As the political chess game surrounding the USMCA continues to unfold, one has to ask, is this bold front by Justin Trudeau more than just a theatrical flourish? Will Canada's interests genuinely remain at the forefront, or could this be just another act in the grand production of political theater? Canadians no doubt will be watching closely, waiting to see if talk transforms into action. The interplay between Canada and the U.S. on trade matters is a tale as old as time, filled with its ups, downs, and everything in between. Yet the dynamic that surrounds the upcoming U.S. election adds an extra layer of unpredictability. In the end, Trudeau's stance, whether it's all show or truly substance, will need to contend with whatever changes come from across the border sooner rather than later. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau's approach will bear fruit, or is it time for Canadian politics to adopt a more conservative strategy? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.